swapping minds with a Starfleet Admiral. Who knew Star Trek Prodigy could go this far? This episode was an interesting choice, and sometimes it did take it a little too far in the whole body swapping thing. However, this is a young person show. Therefore, moments that we could say is a little cringe should be expected sometimes. Either way, this is our review of Star Trek Prodigy Episode 18, Mind Walk. Spoiler warning. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack, and welcome to the show. Now yes, I know I'm meant to be wearing the Christmas jumper, but honestly it's so cold here in the UK right now, I'm not wearing it. I'm going to stick to this warmer NASA jumper and have fun. Blame me in the comments, I know, we'll be back to Christmas shenanigans next week. But before we do warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Okay, engage. Naomi Melmond continues to deliver some amazing music in Star Trek Prodigy, and this episode was a highlight for me with some amazing dramatic music to start the episode of, very much giving us the emotion of a protostar dwarfed and hunted by the Dauntless. The music can use throughout the episode to be some new great Trek pieces which stand alone really well. With Nami doing both the score for Prodigy and Strange New Worlds, she's definitely flexing her music know-how and contributing some great pieces to the already amazing legacy of Star Trek music. The main crux of this episode was a Freaky Friday situation where Janeway and Dahl swap brains, and how this is actually done in the episode is really cool. The usual plan was for Dahl to communicate with Janeway, but because of Dahl's augment genome, which contains Oranigan DNA, Oranigan? Oranigan? He inadvertently swaps minds with Janeway instead. This is something we've seen Oranigans do before, mostly in the Enterprise episode Observer Effect. Look, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologise, but I, I forgot, okay? Just... Now, this isn't the only deep cut we get in this episode, with a deep cut from Janeway talking about Phoebe, who presumably is referring to Phoebe Janeway, sister to Catherine Janeway, from a Voyager novel, Mosaic, which was written by Voyager showrunner Jerry Taylor. Now, I will say, I very much was not keen on how Dahl was done in Janeway's body. With Dal, I'm perfectly fine with Dal's mannerisms, but in Janeway, and pretending to keep it cool, it just came off as quite painful to watch, i.e. cringe. Voice-wise, I think it worked well. Kate Mulgrew is a veteran voice actor, so he's able to portray this different person in Janeway's body well, but the dialogue, and even the animation, came off quite jarring in a sense. However, the same cannot be said for Dal, with Brett Gray doing some amazing work playing as Janeway in Dal's body. The animation was fine, and the dialogue for Admiral Janeway in Dell's body, or as Rock Tart coined, Admiral Dell or Admi Dell, was fine. We even get her mentioning the Salamanders from the fan pen, but Emmy Award winning episode of Voyager, Threshold. We all remember that episode. The redeeming part of the Janeway cringe scenes was some of the USS Dauntless crew. We get to see Commander Tysis in this command position, but also Dr. Newham with his sarcastic comments in typical Tellarite style. Previously, he's forbidden Janeway from drinking coffee. However, due to what likely appears as a nervous breakdown, he's opted to order her to drink coffee right away. In this clip. As your doctor, I order you to drink this coffee. Get it together. Ah! <laughs> oh, how does she drink this stuff? One really amazing scene was the Admi Dal talking of Hollow Janeway, and then having a heart to heart about each other, with Vice Admiral Janeway actually consoling Hollow Janeway because she knows how she would feel in that situation of betraying her crew. We even get a nice little moral in a way in this episode, with some sage words of advice from Admiral Janeway. Vice Admiral Janeway's father, after a young Janeway spilt paint, would say, make something out of this mess. Just because you screwed up doesn't mean you can't do something better than what you've done in a sense. Instead of just hiding it, you can make something of it, basically like blaming it on the family dog. Vice Admiral Janeway used her clearance to restore Hollow Janeway's memories, and really, there isn't anything new here for us. It's mostly for both our Janeways to learn where Chakotay is through a temple anomaly in the future. They could have done something more here and actually shown us more of Chakotay rather than rehashing the same footage we've seen for quite some time now. I'm not sure why Prodigy Show is so keen on hiding Chakotay away, but whatever. There was an interesting scene in this episode from a Diviner. Dahl in Janeway's body gets locked in sickbay due to definitely not acting like a Starfleet Vice Admiral and the Divino reveals himself to Janeway, thinking it's actually the Janeway. He says his plan, but lets her go, as a thank you for saving his life on Tars Lamora. It's an interesting thing, because does this mean the Divino already thinks he is one, and releasing Janeway won't damage his plan? Or is his sense of justice stronger than the mission? Will he say he harm his mission to return a favour? 
This is a man who used slave labor of children and was willing to sacrifice his only child for the mission. As he changed during his time with Dauntless, realizing his people aren't as evil as he wanted them to be, but still needed to be destroyed for his people to survive. The moral question, the moral star. Some very interesting questions from this. I hope they didn't do this just to move the story along for Jamie to escape Medbay, but actually for some character exploration with the Diviner. Will he turn against the Vindicator? Hopefully we'll see him in the next two episodes. In the end, Dahl and Jamie managed to get into an EVA suit and managed to make a conduit to swap their minds back over. Interestingly enough, another episode of Enterprise did this first, with Trip Tucker moving through a shared warp bubble between the NX-01 Enterprise and the NX-02 Columbia. However, in the process of this very dangerous maneuver, Jamie gets stunned by a phaser and tracked to be back into the Dawnless and Dahl has a stretchy mirth bringing back aboard the Protostar. Due to the bad acting of Dahl in Jamie's body, she is now in the brig and people probably won't believe her anymore. As the Protostar exits warp, it meets a massive Federation fleet who are warned of a weapon aboard a ship and they are not messing around, with at least 50 starships here to intercept the Protostar, from Sovereign classes, Centaurs, Akira class starships and many more. We'll do a video on this later in the week. This is amazing to see and makes sense from where the Protostar currently is. They say they're in the Gamma Serpentis system, which is in the Serpent's constellation or Serpent's constellation. That definitely is in the heart of Federation space with Saria, the planet that the Saurians come from, in the Sai Serpentis system and the Amazra, Amazara, from a motion picture in the Psy Serpent system according to the maps used by the Prodigy Writers Group. If I mispronounce all of that, leave me an airlock. You heard. Having a fleet ready for an incursion into the heart of Federation space does make sense, and seeing this wide variety of ships is so cool. What will happen next? This is basically our upcoming two-parter. Will our crew manage to regain some control of the Protostar, and what will the Valka not do? And will the living construct go off and cause the fleet to attack itself? We can only find out by waiting for the next episode, this time next week. Okay, some final thoughts. That was an interesting episode of Star Trek Prodigy. I liked the premise of this episode. However, the moment that put me off was Dahl controlling Janeway via the mind swap. Sure, it makes sense for the episode plot. However, the elements were a little cringe and too much for my own personal taste. But we've got to look at this from the perspective we always advise people to look at Star Trek Prodigy from. Ultimately, this is a kid show, or rather a young person show. Therefore, funny, goofy moments like the Jamie control moments are somewhat needed. So yes, while these moments are cringe to some, for younger viewers, they make more sense. And while I could get a laugh out of them. Also, for some viewers of this will get a kick out of it, I bet. But what did you think of the latest episode of Star Trek Prodigy? Love it? Hate it? Comment down below. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. But for now, I have been Captain Jack, thank you very much for watching and we will see you next week, just in time for Christmas with a penultimate episode of Star Trek Prodigy Season 1. Live long across my friends, goodbye.